Hey folks, end all be all here and uh, we are in for a rough one this week. So as uh, if you guys have watched my last video, you know that I went uh, 3-0 and last week and uh, we are in, uh, in the 400 ranks somewhere right now. And uh, we've been put in a really tough bracket, quite a quite a tough bracket. We've got a uh, couple of folks from Maw, a couple of them from Shadowlands, um, one from uh, from Red Machine as well. Uh, and my current opponent from the uh, the Guild Clones Unleashed. All of them really good players, really solid mods, and uh, really know all of their counters and all. So I was hoping to go two and one, but I have a feeling that this week I might just go one and two, just because of the the caliber of the opponents that I'm facing. But but it's all good, you know. You'll have uh, ebbs and flows like that. One week you'll do good, the other week you'll do bad. Um, that's perfectly fine. It's expected in this uh, new game mode. Right. So before we move on to my opponent itself, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, uh, the Zam Omicron and specifically the Aura team and the turn meter uh, manipulation over there. I have made a separate video on that, but in the last couple of days, I've had some really good discussions on Discord on the Ganbit server on uh, on the turn meter and uh, you know the order. And uh, specifically, uh, you know, um, there are a couple of uh, main uses for the uh, the Zam Omicron. Obviously, you can use it to counter really fast teams that you can't outspeed with with regular uh, people. Uh, you know, you can also use it to take out DR squads, which I've been doing quite a lot over the last week. And starting this week, I'm I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try taking out uh, Jedi Master Kenobi squads uh, using the cat snipe method. Um, first, do the cat snipe using the Aura Zam Omicron. Uh, uh, team and then follow it up with gas once cat is out of the picture follow it up with gas for a clean win um, i've seen fatal do it uh, a couple of times on the streams and uh, somebody mentioned it on my uh, on my the last gl video that i made as well so i wanted to talk a little bit about uh, about that so after the discussion on discord let me actually show you what uh, what i did i went ahead and created a, a very simple uh, spreadsheet which uh, calculates the effective speed um, and this is something which Calvin asked me to to put together. So I just, uh, you know, um, whatever a rough spreadsheet I had, I, I made it a little pretty and I put it in over here so that you can uh, you can basically use it to calculate exactly what turn order your bounty hunters are going to have when they uh, when they go in. So, you know, I'm going to share the spreadsheet uh, in the link down below. Um, so, you know, you can go and um, and open it up in, in Google Sheets and, and enter the values of your own bounty hunter speeds over here and then check out uh, your opponent's uh, uh, GK squads uh, to see whether you can outspeed them or not. Now, let me talk a little bit about the uh, the, the the way that the, the turn meter is calculated over here. So in a for an effective aura team, uh, the order of operation should be boss should go first. Um, he should be the fastest, followed very closely by Grief, who should be the second fastest, followed by Zam and Aura, it doesn't matter who goes next, as long as Mando is the slowest person on the team. Because uh, Bosk is going to go and apply, uh, you know, um, the masses, uh, uh, apply the taunt, Grief is going to follow it up with a mass assist, so 50%, uh, so 10% from Bosk. Uh, well, actually, Boss is not going to give anything because he's not buffed. So 50% uh, contract fulfillment from Grief. And then uh, that's going to be followed up with uh, with Boss, who's going to do another Mass Assist um, and uh, get another 50% in there as well. Uh, Zam and Aura, it's a bonus if they go uh, uh, next, uh, but it's uh, absolutely essential that Man Mando goes after all of them so that uh, you can be sure that he's got 100% of contract after um, uh, when, when he gets his first turn and then he can immediately snipe someone out of the picture. So what you have to do over here in this Excel sheet is you have to plug in the base speeds of your bounty hunters after mods. Uh, it will automatically calculate what the speed is going to be if you've got the Zam Omicron, what the, uh, the bonus is going to be and then what the effective speed is going to be of your bounty hunter. So this is basically on turn one, what the effective speed is going to be and effective turn meter. So Basically, on uh, after boss goes and taunts, it's it's going to be grief's turn. And on grief's turn, we have to basically measure what everyone's turn meter is. So grief is obviously going to be at zero percent turn meter. Boss has just gone, so he's uh, since he's like in this particular example, he's like seven speed over uh, grief. So he'll be at one point seven two percent turn meter. Um, but the others, they are pretty close to hundred percent turn meter. Zam is the next fastest; will be at ninety two percent. Aura is next at 84% and uh, Mando is next at 83%. Now, at this point of time, when you do the mass assist with grief, uh, if you go, if you're going to uh, crit uh, with Mando, uh, which is very likely because you know you should mod your Mando for high crit chance, then what's going to happen is you're going to get uh, 
um, two things are going to happen. You're going to get 30% TM from for Mando itself and 15% TM for each and every bounty hunter. Secondly, because you use a special ability by Grief, you also get 100% TM with Bosk. Um, so 115% TM is what Bosk gets and his effective, his new TM is going to be 116.72%. Mando, after getting 30% TM on the crit, if you add 30% to the 83% that he already has, is at 113% uh, TM. So with the new TM overflow mechanics that we have, you can see that since Bosk is effectively at 116% TM versus Mando is at 113%, Bosk is going to take priority and he's going to go next and then you're going to follow it up with the master assist from Bosk. That's why I think this, uh, this, this particular spreadsheet makes it quite... Uh, easy for you to to calculate exactly uh, you know what speed your Mando needs to be so that he does not overtake Bosk. If your Bosk is too slow, or your Mando is too fast. What might happen is your Mando, after getting 30% turn meter, might be his effective new TM might be more than Bosk's, and then he ends up going next, and uh, his contract will not be fulfilled. And then you have to basically cycle around to a second turn for the execute, and you may not survive until that time. So in order to get his execute on the first turn, you have to make sure, once you plug in the values over here, that your Bosk speed, this new TM after Grief Mass Assist, is greater than uh, Mando's uh, new TM. That's going to be a, a very important part of this, uh, of this calculation. So uh, what I've done over here towards the right is there are a couple of checks that you have once you enter your values of your uh, your speed. You can uh, check to see whether Mando is the slowest on your team. And you can also check to see whether Mando has got less TM than Bosk after Grief Mass Assist. Now, um, that's the general scenario where, uh, you know, um, Mando is able to crit and you're able to get that bonus TM. In a lot of situations, you will not be able to get the, the bonus TM because Mando can't crit. It could be because, uh, you know, you're going up against a gas team, for example, where you can't crit with out-of-turn attacks. Or you could be going up against a Jedi uh, Master Kenobi, where, uh, you know, he prevents any sort of uh, turn meter, uh, uh, you know, TM manipulation, um, you know, uh, a first order squad with Hux in there also is another one where you won't gain turn meter. So in those situations, you have to just take a look at the effective speed without any of the uh, turn meter manipulations in, uh, in, in this section over here. The, your effective speed is basically what is going to determine how fast your bounty hunters are in the cases that you're not able to gain additional turn meter. So in the case for cat snipe, so if you want to take in your bounty hunters to be able to, to snipe the cat from, a, from an enemy JMK team, you get 30 lead from, uh, you know, you, you, in my particular example, my current opponent has got a 375 speed cat, um, gets 30 speed from JMK, so his the cat's effective speed is 405. Now, my effective speed of my Bosk and Grief, uh, most importantly Bosk, is 414. That's the most important thing. As long as your Bosk is faster than cat, you can make this work. Um, so, you know, um, that's the first check. Your boss has to be faster than cat. And when you get your first turn, what you need to do is you need to do a, a mass assist from boss. Instead of taunting, you have to do the mass assist because your boss is not going to survive. Uh, cat is going to annihilate him immediately. So you need to do the mass assist with boss. You get 40% fulfillment towards the contract. Then uh, most likely, uh, if your grief is slower than, uh, than uh, cat, then uh, you know cat is going to uh, take care of annihilate your uh, your boss and then your grief gets to go next um, and then grief can go ahead and do another mass assist and get another 40 percent turn meter um, or, or another 40 percent uh, benefit to the contract so we are at 80 percent contract fulfillment right now and um, after this point it's extremely important that your zam and aura go next which is why your mando has to be slowest on the team your Zam and Aura have to go next and fulfill another 10%, 10% on the contract so that by the time that Mando's turn comes around, he is ready to go ahead and snipe someone, um, in this case, Cat, uh, so that uh, you know you can get rid of Cat and then follow it up with a, with a Gas, which is a pretty easy match. Gas versus uh, JMK without Cat uh, is a very easy matchup. So that's the order of operations over here. Um, a few things to keep in mind. One, I mentioned Mando has to be the slowest on the team. Second, Bosk has to be faster than Cat. Third, if there is a Padme on the team, there's a, there's an additional danger, if, especially if it's a fast Padme. What's going to happen is if your Padme is faster than your Mando, what's going to happen is uh, your cat is going to annihilate the the enemy cat is going to annihilate the boss. Grief is going to go 
Zam might go, Aura might go. But if your Mando is slow, then Cat, then your uh, then your enemy Padme, then the Padme might get the next turn and go ahead and stun Mando. Because all four once grief once Bosk is gone, all four characters are in stealth, which means that all of them can be any of them can be targeted. So Padme is going to go ahead and land a stun on. Uh, your uh, your mando and uh, this counter can go to hell so uh, what you need to do is also ensure that uh, if there is an a, a padme in the enemy team uh, she is slower than mando after the bonuses so in this particular case the my current opponent has got a padme of 296 with the 30 bonus the padme is at 326 and my mando after the zam army bonus is at 338 so um, uh, this counter should be able to work even if the enemy uh, JMK team has got cat on on there, so those are a few things to keep in mind as you are uh, you are uh, deciding whether to take uh, the uh, the cat snipe approach with your uh, bounty hunters. The other section over here is just a DR counter. Um, this one is a is a pretty straightforward one as long as the only check that you have is your uh, your uh, uh, bosk and uh, grief speed. Uh, should be faster than the DR speed. So the effective speed for boss and grief because they need to do the two mass assists. That needs to be faster than the than the uh, your grief. Especially you have to be faster than the effective speed of DR after all the talent bonuses and all that. As long as that uh, condition is fulfilled, uh, the DR counter is pretty straightforward. I've done it tons of times. Um, you know your Mando needs to be slowest, or actually does not even need to be slowest as long as you have the the right um, um, two mass assists from boss and grief. Uh, you should be able to get the contract pretty easily and snipe a DR right away. So I've got that additional scenario built in into this uh, this spreadsheet as well. I'll leave a link down below. Feel free to check it out and uh, put in your own values to play around with it to see if uh, you know uh, what you need to do to get your bounty hunters towards the right speed. The most important thing, like I mentioned, is is these two cells over here. Make sure that your Mando's effective TM is less than Bosk's effective TM after. Uh, all the uh, the TM gain again on crit that is going to uh, help ensure that you have the right turn order set up for the uh, the Mando in the uh, uh, Aura uh, team. All right. So now that we've covered this, um, let's go to my my current opponent. Um, so I am facing a Zoo from the Guild uh, Clones Unleashed, a really good guild. Uh, you know, very TW focused. In fact, uh, that's the guild that Fatal and Blade Baka belong to. Really good players as well. Um, and uh, you know, you can see over here. There's a, you know, my opponent is about a million GP more than me, but that's, uh, you know, GP is really nothing uh, that uh, that you need to consider these days. What is more important is mods, where I would feel uh, both of us are more or less equal. I think my opponent has got a slight edge, but I would say we're more or less equal in terms of mods. Relic is where, uh, you know, my opponent obviously has a big advantage given the one million more GP. Uh, they've got about, uh, you know, 50% more relics than me. Um, so that is obviously a huge advantage that my opponent has. He's got like four Relic 9s and I just have one. Um, so tons of Relic levels over there. Um, he's got all the GLs. I've got all the GLs with all the ultimates, but half of his GLs have got R9. I just have R9 on my JML. Um, and he's got Starkiller as well. That's another big advantage. Plus he's got more Omis than me as well. I believe he's got... Uh, Eight Omis. I've got just four uh, Omnicroms. He's got all the Om Om Omicroms on the uh, on the Star Killer. So he's got, uh, I would say, definitely a, a huge edge over me. Um, and there's there, there's roster is one thing, and, and the playstyle is another thing. I think even in playstyle, my opponent has got a huge edge over me. Um, they are used to a lot of off-meta counters. Very comfortable using um, uh, non-meta teams to counter uh, GLs and all that. In fact, uh, you know my opponent always keeps uh, uh, Jedi Master Kenobi and uh, L Lord Vader on defense, and he's got at least three or four ways to take out uh, the enemy Jedi Master Kenobi. He uses uh, JML, Ray, uh, uses the Cat Snipe method as well, and uses the um, um, uh, Sith Eternal with the uh, with the. Uh, um, with a couple of supporting characters like uh, Armorer and Watt, uses the Sith Eternal to take care of uh, the JML, uh, the JMK squad as well. So pretty flexible in terms of his roster. Um, so, you know, um, definitely a, a huge advantage over there. But we have to do the best that we can. Um, I've got a few things under my sleeve. I need to make sure that I set a really tough defense and then uh, try to clear the board as well as I can in order for me to uh, to stand a chance. So... Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the actual match itself. Um, so, yeah, there we go. 
So for my own defense, I have kept uh, in the front zone. What I wanted to do was I wanted to pull out my opponent's uh, Jedi Knight Revan uh, and uh, General Grievous because he usually takes Grievous against CLS and I have CLS at the back. So I kept uh, DR with Maul over here to pull out the General Grievous so that hopefully he, if he decides to keep his own CLS on defense, uh, he won't have General Grievous for the CLS squad. Um, and then I've kept a Treya squad. I've kept a JTR squad. Um, and then the SLKR squad over here as well to try to pull out at least a GL, at least one GL. And then at the back, instead of my JMK squad, I kept my cat under uh, Ray. Um, and this one is, um, um, it's slightly tricky for a few other comps. Uh, it can get tricky for, uh, for, um, um, for the uh, Sith Eternal squad if you don't have Watt or Armorer with you. Um, you have to take in a few tanks uh, along with it and you get low banners essentially. So um, it's it's not uh, insurmountable, this team, but it can make certain counters tricky and it can reduce your options on offense. I've got the CLS squad over here as well, like I mentioned. I've got the uh, uh, Django, uh, IG Quill and Bam under Django. And I've got, kept Dash over here as well because I've kept my Vandor and... Uh, um, L3 under Ray. I've kept my dash over here at a 349 speed dash with another 30 speed bump from Django. Um, felt that they might be able to get a head start on things and get some damage done over here. And then at the top, I've kept a few other tough squads. I've kept my Lord Vader squad with the uh, Maul and uh, Thrawn and, uh, um, and Vader itself, Darth Vader. Um, that's a tricky squad to take out. I mean, people typically don't like to use SLKR versus it. I've kept my dad bought Boba squad. I've kept uh, uh, my uh, my Mon Mothma squad with effective 390 something speed uh, um, Kyle Katan. And then I've uh, this is something that I've recently done. I've recently uh, Omicroned my uh, um, Iden Verzio. Iden has been doing some really good things on defense for a lot of folks. Um, obviously, my troopers are very far behind, only G12. So, uh, you know, a lot of counters will work against this particular team. But uh, I felt, you know, at least uh, my opponent might be able to, uh, you know, uh, lose some banners against it or take a really heavy squad against it because, you know, that's not a squad to be trifled with. But, uh, but I definitely need more relic levels on that squad to get the threat levels up. And at the back, my opponent has uh, uh, always keeps uh, executor and negotiator on defense. He's got really, really good ships, like fully relict uh, rebels and uh, uh, very comfortable with taking rebels against negotiators, against all other squads, um, very comfortable taking first order against uh, a bunch of squads. Um, and, uh, you know, um, I, I couldn't, uh, I, I can't compete on ships. I have to win on the character zone. That's, that's going to be my, my saving grace. Um, can't rely on ships to uh, to win this battle because my opponent really blows me out of the water when it comes to ships. R9 Piet, obviously, but uh, obviously the Piet is, will, will be on defense for sure. But um, even Kenobi, I believe, is R9. And, um, and uh, yeah, bunch of really good ships. Um, so anyway, uh, let's go ahead and see what we are facing on uh, on defense. Um, we've got... Uh, the Aiden squad, the Mon Mothma squad, just like me, my opponent has kept those on defense as well. The difference being his is way more relic than mine. Um, and he's, he's kept the uh, the Maul uh, DR squad up top as well. Down south, he's kept a couple of GLs, um, Ray and uh, Lord Vader. And then he's kept uh, uh, the Dash team. It's a non-Omicron Dash, but uh, there's, there's a couple of tricky characters in there. And uh, just like me, he's kept... Uh, a, IG Quill and Bam under uh, Boba with Nest in there as well. So that is going to be a, a tricky squad as well. Uh, I think it's trying to draw out my JKR, given that most people tend to use JKR versus that. Um, so, um, so yeah, I'm expecting at least one GL at the back, if not more. All right. So let's go ahead with the first battle. I decided to save my... Uh, I do have JMK on offense, but without CAD. So I decided to save that for the back. I decided to take... A, Sith Eternal versus Ray. Now, this is a slightly tricky Ray squad with uh, with uh, JTR in there. So, uh, you know, you lose a lot of banners by getting in these extra tanks. You typically only need uh, C and Watt to counter uh, most Ray teams. But in this particular case, I wanted to be sure that healing immunity does not screw me up and, you know, days or ability block doesn't screw me up. So I was forced to take in Watt over here as well. 
um, and I really felt I probably won't need Watt anywhere else because you know I'm I'm not using the SLKR uh, Watt counter against Lord Vader since my SLKR is on defense. So I I felt that I could probably uh, uh, afford Watt over here. I wanted a sure win. I wanted a you know one shot victory for sure. So uh, you know uh, what in what I usually do is uh, you know I mark I uh, you know uh, link up. Finn and JTRs and uh, try to get rid of them as soon as I can. A lot of people like to link the faster characters, like uh, you know, if BB-8 is in there, they like to link him, or Ray. Ray is actually one of the very popular character to link, just so that you can get to your ultimate faster. But, uh, you know, um, I didn't know whether I'll have a chance to link again uh, for a second time. Um, so I decided to, uh, you know, um, go ahead and uh, get my ultimate and go ahead and link the two characters that I want gone right at the beginning, which is uh, JTR and Finn. And then uh, did my ultimate, got rid of them, and now uh, the battle is very much under control without any healing immunity in here and with the with extra health that Armorous Tech provides, extra defense, as well as the extra protection regeneration both Armorer and Waters have given me, uh, the battle is very much under control. I just need to make sure that these side characters go away and then one on one with Ray, uh, Sith Eternal will have uh, no problem at all. Um, the issue is obviously very low banners, um, but uh, you know, um, one shot is a one shot, even if it's low banners. So just waiting for Ray to come out of the ultimate, and you can see over here I have regained almost full health and full protection. And uh, I do the link again just to get a couple of turns so that I can refill my protection bar all the way up top. And then, and then take another whirlwind from Ray, and uh, and then I start focusing down directly on Ray and uh, and taking out, taking her out. There we go. I think that the Ray managed to get another ultimate in, but uh, but that's that's fine. So I debated a lot what to take against this, and I settled on Sith Eternal because I didn't. I just had uh, two GLs on offense. Um, I had. Uh, my JMK, well, actually, I had three JLs on offense, but I needed to save one for the back. I had my JMK, a JML that I was going to use against Lord Vader, and I could use either the JMK or the um, um, or uh, C against uh, this uh, Ray squad. But uh, JMK without Cat, I really wasn't sure, uh, you know, how well it'll do against Ray, and I probably might have ended up uh, dropping a ton of banners anyway if Ray managed to get a few ultimates, a uh, whirlwinds out. So anyway, now then I decided to take in my my uh, JMK versus Lord Vader, and this is a B Lord Vader squad. There's really not many uh, good characters in there. There's no Maul, there's no Vader, there's no Thrawn. Um, there is an uh, it's, it is an R9 uh, uh, Lord Vader and an R8 Royal Guard, so they are thick. Um, but uh, a couple of first order squads and uh, characters in here, um, which is uh, a little strange. I usually don't see Phasma over here. Uh, I know that. OG Kylo is a uh, you know uh, underlined force user, so he has some synergy. But Phasma is probably here to give that turn meter generation. Um, but uh, anyway, I didn't decided not to waste any good Jedi over here, so I just decided to take in my D Jedi. Um, you know, as long as Shakti and Hoda in there, I think those guys are the the main guys who uh, you know provide a little bit of cleanse, healing, and all that. The other characters are really, uh, you know, not important. I took in my Mace and Old Ben, who I definitely wasn't using anywhere else, and decided to, uh, you know, get the battle done with them. Uh, you know, battle is, is pretty smooth. I mean, without Maul, this guy takes a long time to reach his ultimate. So all you need to do is get rid of the side characters. Uh, and we, we are able to get it done way in advance. Uh, you know, he's not even reached uh, his first ultimate bar, and we've already gotten rid of all his allies and we've reached our own ultimate typically i save the ultimate until after he's gone and uh, done his uh, you know the the crush aoe ability but in this case since th there's a ton of time yet to go on the ultimate i just uh, you know make it a point to uh, to get my own ultimate and then uh, and then just work him down there's still three and a half minutes left so plenty of time for me to take him down so I just need to, you know, use the lead ability as much as I can. It does uh, 67k damage uh, since uh, I've got an R9 GML. Um, it does 67k damage on on a GL and about close to 95k damage on a non-GL. So pretty happy with the uh, the results over there. Um, you know, definitely one of my best decisions to R9 GML. It's made so many counters so much more easier. And it's made, uh, you know, the GML counter, especially to Lord Vader, even R9 Lord Vader teams, 
um, even the ones with Maul and uh, and uh, uh, Vader and all of those, it makes it a breeze to counter them without uh, using up any major Jedi. Um, I typically tend to save my Cam, my JKL, my JKR in other squads, and I can still take in uh, you know B Jedi to take out uh, most Lord Vader comps. Um, for the tougher ones, I need Watt in there usually, but for uh, the ones without uh, you know Maul, um, you know B Jedi is perfectly fine with with that. Um, 61 banners. So, the other squad over here is uh, there's a dash squad with um, with a few uh, uh, you know few damage dealing scoundrels. Uh, not no one is really that fast. The dash is 330, so after his uh, leadership is 350. So I just decided to take in uh, my uh, EP Mara squad with the uh, uh, Gideon in there. Usually I have Maul in there. Uh, usually I have uh, Thrawn in there. Uh, but uh, Thrawn and Vader, both of them are uh, on defense with Lord Vader. Um, and as long as uh, your Gideon is fast and you're able to outspeed uh, the enemy team, you know, Mara and EP give tons of control and basically don't allow the team to take any turn. The one quick check that you need to have is you need to make sure that the team doesn't have any uh, um, any turn meter generation mechanic, uh, like GG, for example. I wouldn't use this team against GG because of uh, B1 in there. Um, and then, uh, you know, you just need to make sure that you outspeed them. And that's pretty easy to do with Gideon. Um, I have my Gideon at 382 speed, I believe, um, which uh, helps me, uh, you know, outrun a lot of different teams. Because I typically tend to separate my Thrawn and Vader away from these guys, I like to keep my Gideon really, really fast so that I can use these guys with um, a couple of B Empire characters like uh, Tarkin and, uh, and uh, um, what's this guy's name? Um, yeah, I forgot. Um, and this other guy, um, and uh, I usually, you know, tend to, uh, you know, do a decent job as long as uh, um, Moff Gideon is, is in there. Um, Tarkin and uh, and the other guy, they prove a really uh, interesting, uh, you know, they, they prove quite useful actually. Both of them have got turn meter uh, reduction. Um, Tarkin with his uh, second ability and uh, um and yeah man I'm, why am i blanking on this guy's name but he has a stagger basically and uh, um and that that helps with uh, you know keeping the the team in check as well apart from the stagger that uh, um that mara jade has so pretty easy 65 you know um and uh, i'm not really wasting any teams which i might need elsewhere it's a good team to use uh, in the uh, the front zone um Krennic, that's the guy, <laughs> Director Krennic. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, B, so I decided to so now now this this team, which is uh, you know um, any version of Bam that I usually see on the board. Over the last week, I've been taking Qui Gon Jinn on offense against it. Typically, I take in uh, all five some weak Jedi over there as well, but uh, and, and I just wait for them to get into low health and then uh, you know blast them away with Jedi Knight Anakin AOE. So I, I hold the AOE until Qui Gon Jinn is dead and then I blast them away. But I realize you really don't need all five of them. Uh, you know, you just, the other two end up not doing anything at all and they don't add anything to the battle because all you're doing is waiting for Jedi, uh, Qui Gon Jinn to die. So all you need is Cam for the um, for the boost of offense um, and uh, Jedi Knight Anakin for the AoE, obviously, um, and the Qui Gon Jinn for the army lead. Um, that's all you need in this team and uh, it can take out some really tough squads which can either outspeed you or which can, um, you know, um, which are quite healthy, have got a lot of stat sharing, have got tons of damage. This is a perfect example. The uh, Quill is, I think, 340, 50, something like that, and another 30 speed from uh, from Django, um, plus uh, you know a lot of uh, lot of other uh, stat sharing bonuses that these guys have. So um, you know it's a uh, it's a pretty straightforward counter, and and uh, not the best banners, especially if uh, J Bam is able to apply healing immunity, but. Um, but yeah, but it's it's perfectly fine. One thing you have to do is uh, you know um, try to uh, make sure that you don't uh, that you don't do your AOE and try to not get anyone below uh, you know 50% uh, health because then Bam will go just like this and uh, apply damage immunity on folks. So you can see over there he applied damage immunity. Quill came out, but I was able to uh, you know snipe the rest of them. But because Bam had damage immunity. I wasn't able to take him down and I had to take him down in the second shot, but it's fine. It's 61 banners still. It's uh, it's pretty okay. I think if you end with full banners, you get about 63 or something like that. All right. So at the back, um, he usually keeps uh, Jedi um, 
Master Kenobi at the back, so I was completely expecting that. But SLKR was a surprise, so he's kept four GLs on, on defense. Two in the front, two at the back. And I have just one GL left to take out uh, both these GLs. That's my Jedi Master Kenobi. So, um, and the Jedi Master Kenobi is without cat, so I definitely can't mirror because I'm going to get uh, massacred over there. But luckily this week, my modding has been, uh, you know, I have, uh, you know, modded my teams to specifically uh, counter, uh, you know, um, the Jedi Master Kenobi cat version using the snipe method that I just talked about. So this particular cat is at 375 speed, um, but my... Uh, my own uh, bounty hunters, I have them at 339 for Bosk and 332 for Grief. Both of them, I think, will, will outspeed the enemy cat. So I'm going to take in my bounty hunter team. There you see 339 on Bosk, which is quite an investment, but I feel that it's worth it if it helps me take out a JMK and ensure a full clear. 332 on Grief. And the speeds on the others don't matter as long as Bosk, as long as Mando is the slowest and he outspeeds the next fastest person after cat in the team. So they're going after folks. Now, instead of doing the taunt, you have to go after um, the tank, do the mass assist, and get 40% uh, on your contract. So you can see over here, I've got 40% on the contract because four of them are puffed. And then you do another uh, mass assist with grief, and you get another 40%. Uh, at this stage, you know, um, boss gets taken out, which is perfectly fine. It, it doesn't matter at all. He's done his job. The contract is at 80%, 40 and 40. And that's why now it's important that both your Aura and Zam go before your Mando because they will then give 10% uh, each and um, and they'll be able to um, to give contract. You can see over here, uh, Aura has got a contract um, and uh, you know Mando is able to snipe Cat out of the picture. There we go. Now, the rest of the battle, uh, you know, um, we we will lose. Um, there's uh, definitely, uh, you know, nothing else you can do in this team. Um, but surprisingly, you know, with, uh, with Mace in there, um, I almost was able to get, uh, get this guy out. You can see over here, I was able to trigger the savior, but, uh, you know, no luck. And he reached his ultimate and healed him up fully. So that's fine. Um, so Cat is, uh, you know, um, the bounty hunter team has done his job, taken out Cat. Uh, now, this particular comp, uh, it really doesn't matter what the comp is, who the other side characters are. In this particular case, I think my opponent has kept Jedi Knight Anakin um, just to prevent the, to make the Sith Eternal and uh, the Jedi Master Luke uh, counter a little bit tougher because he applies buff immunity and healing immunity on his basic. Um, but it really doesn't matter who the other characters are. Um, you can, uh, you know, whether they're, they're, uh, you know, uh, Cam or uh, Padme or anyone else out there. Uh, you know, you'll you'll be able to take care of them pretty easily if you do the uh, the two shot method. Um, so I decided to take in my gas against uh, it, and you can see over here there's really no danger at all. If you get gas without cat um, in the enemy JMK team, um, you do a a pretty it's a pretty straightforward job of uh, of cleaning them up. You have to be a little careful when gas is kneeling down, um, but um, you know it really doesn't matter. It's a, they gain so many so many buffs that uh, you know it's a pretty simple job to uh, to uh, to snipe them uh, to to get rid of them using the uh, the gas fire first team. So there's the savior that's been triggered. Now I'm just trying to make sure that I get rid of Anakin first, given that he is uh, the biggest damage dealer left. And then um, I just take care of Ahsoka since she has assists a ton. And that can feed uh, into uh, Jedi Master Kenobi's ultimate as well. So I apply the target, the, uh, the um, armor shred on Kenobi and then take out Ahsoka. And then uh, we decide to go after Mace who really is not much of a threat over here. So, so yeah, it's a pretty... Uh, Pretty straightforward uh, counter. Um, as long as you've got your bounty hunters modded correctly, the toughest part is taking out cat. But um, your gas, uh, I don't think there's any special requirement on in terms of gas modding. Um, I have mine modded for defense and protection. Um, but uh, you know, even if you've got offense mods, I think uh, it should be fine. Um, defense and protection is a little better because it it helps your gas stay up uh, a little longer, and uh, you know. Um, 
it helps that if you've got rid of the side characters before gas sits down um it just makes the counter a little more consistent i guess so so yeah i'm now i'm just waiting for uh, there's still 3 minutes left so there's no danger of timing out or anything like that um but uh, you know lone kenobi by himself <coughs> can get a little tough to clean up so it takes a little while but uh, you know with the amount of buffs that uh, get generated the gas team uh, <coughs> uh, does a pretty decent job so now gas is sitting down um and uh, i believe over here um, um jmk is programmed to go after fives which is a good thing because you know without any of his supporting cast in there um the uh, you know jmk by himself is not able to do any damage to fives at all so we are able to recover some protection on gas but uh, ultimately it was a two shot which is you know bad on banners but but uh, i think in the grand scheme of things it's relatively cheap if you're able to use a non gl against a jmk squad then i decided to take my own jmk without cat against the uh, supreme leader kylo um this one is a you know it's a good thing i didn't uh, uh, save my c for the back and uh, saved my jmk because if my c was at the back uh, you know it would have been a tough situation c with armor and uh, you know um what can counter uh, uh, slkr as well it's been done before you need a couple of tanks as well but this is a, a way more uh, you know reliable counter i i feel much more comfortable about this one than um, than anything else i've kept uh, you know apart from padme over here to give that extra bit of protection up um to prevent crits i've also kept uh, grandmaster yoda in there he helps to um, uh, apply uh, protection up on his own as well and he helps to apply um, foresight which is pretty critical against uh, uh crew um uh, pretty critical against slkr because uh, you know he ends up whiffing on the uh, aoes but it really doesn't matter because these guys can't crit so their ultimate charge really doesn't get built up at all all right so we go ahead and get our own ultimate and uh, the enemy kylo is almost at his ultimate but we uh, you know we we're, we're trying to get down the sides so that uh, you know we can then focus our attention on kylo later on there we go he's reached his ultimate charge so what i decide to do over here is decide to give damage immunity to gk so that he can survive a little longer um because he's going to get keep getting poked from uh, slkr spread some more debuffs spread some more uh, foresights over there and then uh, let's see what uh, slkr does yep it does the swipe gets dodged there's the swipe again this time it hits but uh, you know without critting it really doesn't uh, gain much charge on the ultimate all right so now this battle is taken care of pretty straightforward so that's the other advantage of if you want to keep cat on defense with ray or or any other team you can uh, you know um use uh, you know jmk without uh, cat um pretty effectively against a lot of teams um the other thing that you can do is you can keep cat on offense and uh, decide to take uh, padme with cat and a couple of other uh, you know supporting galactic republic characters that's a strong team by itself it can take out some versions of jedi master kenobi as well um and uh, some of the other gls as well and then you can use jmk without cat as another team by itself so that's another advantage if you uh, decide to save jmk on offense you can always split up your cat from your jmk team um your cat and padme and then decide to use two strong teams uh, depending on what the situation may need all right now let's go ahead and uh uh let's breeze through the rest <clears throat> yep so against the the jedi the, the qui-gon jin squad i was initially going to take my bad batch in and then i noticed that there's no jedi knight anakin in there so it's really a, a b squad so i decided to you know uh, hold off on that for now and go ahead and uh, uh you know uh, take care of the darth revan squad under maul now typically i would have taken uh, bounty hunters against it but obviously i wasted my bounty hunters against uh, um jmk but also uh, you know with the maul version jedi are uh, are a pretty uh, safe bet um your jedi knight revan lead is going to prevent any turn meter generation that uh, maul lead gives in the beginning so you can uh, if you've got a decently fast uh, um revan um you can very comfortably outspeed the uh, enemy um uh, dart revan and put a mark on him 
and then obviously you can't assist on him but you can as long as he's got marked you can target him and he won't go into stealth and you can go ahead and take him out so you have to take him out first and then uh, work out uh, work on the rest of the team uh, i usually like to take out Bast bastilla next because she can also cause some problems with uh, all those debuffs that she gives out and then i like to take out malik and then uh, finally um, uh, marauder and uh, and uh, maul so yeah, I mean, the, the main Jedi that you need to take in over here, obviously, is JKR. Um, Basti and Jolie are good um, because they are um, also Old Republic and they give additional speed and uh, offense boosts. Um, and then since I had Jedi Knight, Luke in there, decided to use him because he's a high damage dealer. A lot of people use um, um, G GMY over there as well or cam or any any other high damage dealing jedi i think you need uh, at least one source of uh, big damage in there um, so that's what jedi knight luke is doing in there all right so malik was taken care of with uh, some counters and uh, basti got dead due to counters as well now we just need to take out sith marauder um, ayla is great in there she i mean especially after you've taken out uh, um your um, darth revan you know you can you can land stuns and ayla is is pretty good for uh, for that uh, that extra stun ability, stun on a basic. Eli in general excels in um, in uh, assist based teams. So 60 banners over there, not the best. Typically, you can recover some banners. I've I've usually ended with 63, 64 banners as well. But uh, you know, sometimes um, you can't. You don't have a choice. All right. Now, against the Mon Mothma team. I decided to take in my Grievous. Now, Grievous is, is a premium to use against the Mon Mothma team because Grievous is such a great guy on offense that, uh, you know, you can use him against such great squads. Feels like a waste using him against Grievous, against a Mon Mothma, and that too for such low banners. So I think in the future, I might keep my uh, Iden Verzio team on offense to use against uh, these Mon Mothma, Kyle Katan squads, um, especially now that I've got my Omicron on them. And, you know, I don't see myself uh, uh, putting... Uh, uh, high relics on my uh, troopers anytime soon. I just don't have the relic materials, especially with uh, all these new characters going on Cantina Farm. So I might as well, I think G12 troopers might do a decent job against uh, Mon Mothma um, uh, with Iden Verzio. So I think uh, I might just do that. And that allows me to save my Grievous for other counters like uh, CLS or Starkiller or... Um, or uh, you know um, anything else, uh, maybe Maul or something like that. So that's most likely what I'm going to do because Grievous is at such a premium on offense right now that uh, there's so many squads that you can take him against. Even GL squads, I mean, uh, JML, uh, Sith Eternal, uh, you know, if you play it right, uh, it's, um, it's a pretty, uh, pretty decent uh, counter. So I think that's the, this is the last time I'm probably taking Grievous against him on Mothma. Probably going to keep my Aiden Verzio on defense. On offense, rather. So these guys targeted my my uh, B1 and took him out, which cost me a lot of banners over here. Um, but I'm able to get rid of uh, everyone else and 57 banners, which is which is terrible. Eight banners lost. Um, yep. Um, with Iron Verzio, that would have been a, a full banner victory, 65. Anyway, so. Uh, as I mentioned, B. This is a B Qui Gon Jinn squad because there's no Jedi Knight Anakin in there, and there's really no AOEs apart from that one uh, pathetic AOE from Plo. Um, the others really don't have any AOEs. So you know, when you see a Qui Gon Jinn squad like this, you can uh, you can afford to you know um, take it out with something like um, like uh, Night Sisters or Geos, um, anything which has a turn meter train and, and it's got survivability. I think it should be perfectly fine. Um, I was running short on teams and I wasn't really uh, thinking this will be an efficiency battle um, given that, you know, it's a tough defense. So I thought that, uh, you know, I, I might be able to prevent my opponent from clearing. So I wanted to just, uh, you know, get through this team. And I felt Night Sisters is a cheap enough squad to take against uh, this to uh, to get rid of them. Um, feels like a waste of an Omicron to keep Qui-Gon Jinn with, um, with some of these B Jedi because they can be taken out so easily. But... Uh, um, you know, especially since Qui-Gon Jinn on offense, especially paired with Jedi Knight Anakin, can do so much damage. I mean, you, you throw him against, uh, you know, scoundrel teams, against uh, First Order squads, any any big, uh, you know, survivable squad which do a lot of damage. And, uh, you know, you can uh, you can nuke them. I think even Mon Mothma probably would have been a better option if I'd taken my 
Qui-Gon Jinn against Mon Mothma, um, with only Qui-Gon Jinn and uh, Anakin against Mon Mothma, I think that would have been a, a guaranteed 64-65 banners as well. Um, that's another good good uh, use of Qui-Gon Jinn. So if you're keeping him on defense, you know, keep, keep a tough team with it and make sure that you uh, absorb the enemy's bad batch before that. But if you're keeping it on defense and not keeping it with Jedi Knight Anakin, um, it's really not worth it. You're, it can be cheesed. Um, yeah, I should have probably healed over there and gained uh, some banners back on my zombie. But I would have just got one banner back. Anyway, that's fine. So this team is taken care of. The south zone is done. Let's go to the north zone. Now, over here, let me pause this briefly. Um... This, I, I didn't know what to take against Iden Verzio. Now, this one is a non-Omicron version uh, um, Iden Verzio. Um, so it's a little bit less of a threat. I have my Treya on defense. But uh, Treya, uh, if you use that to counter Iden Verzio, it needs to be high relict. Um, especially if it's an Omicron Iden Verzio, it needs to be like R7 and above uh, if you're using the Treya counter. And typically, you always, almost always want Badis in there as well. This one is a non-Omicron, but, you know, uh, Iden is not... Uh, relic up, but the others are they're all minimum r4 r5 so i thought that i might be able to uh, uh, get a decent job done with bad bad patch so let's see what happens now obviously i i is going to get a first turn 100 percent turn meter she also gets uh, from her lead another 35 speed and when she does a special ability she gains uh, she gets another uh, 30 speed from uh, from her uh, second special that she does and at the same time, uh, because Shore is in the team, she gets an additional 15% turn meter because uh, Shore is in the team and uh, every time an uh, allied and uh, uh, empire troop, uh, trooper or empire uh, ally does a special, they gain 15% turn meter. So your Iden Verzio can, uh, this particular Iden Verzio was 233 speed. But after the first turn, she was effectively at 352 speed just because of all the speed bonuses and turn meter generation which is taking place. So she ends up taking two turns back to back, even though she was only at 233 speed. So I I'm, and my echo, unfortunately, was at 251 speed. So I, I just wasn't able to outspeed Iden Verzio's second turn. If Iden Verzio was one speed less, then uh, my echo would have uh, gone... Uh, uh, next, and then, uh, you know, dispelled all the debuffs, gained turn meter, uh, you know, applied days and uh, healing immunity on everyone, and uh, it would have been a, a much better situation. But as you can see over here, just 20 seconds in, my team hasn't even gone yet, and Magna has, Magma has gone ahead and reduced the turn meter for everyone, and um, uh, my team is demolished. Only, uh, only three characters remaining behind with low health and uh, with healing immunity on it. So I'm in a tough situation, but uh, you know, this guy finally gets a turn um, and I'm able to dispel everyone. And uh, then since I've got Furious on my my um, Wrecker, I'm able to land stuns on a few key characters. Now it's a question of uh, now the battle is more or less under control. Um, I still am down to people, but, uh, you know, Bad Patch is a very survivable team. They can they can pull uh, victory from the jaws of defeat. And that's what happens over here. You can see. Uh, these guys are, uh, you know, uh, days, so they're not taking as many turns. But, uh, you know, you can see over here that uh, my Bad Batch is doing a decent job, even uh, being shot two people and against a highly relic squad. But I think for this counter to be more uh, effective, what needs to happen is uh, Echo needs to outspeed uh, Iden Verzio's second turn. Um, if that happens, then all five will be standing uh, and then you'll be able to get the turn meter train rolling. You'll be able to st daze everyone, stun everyone, and uh, you, the battle will be more under control, especially if you've got all five with you. Um, but if Iden Verzio manages to take the second turn, then uh, you probably shouldn't use uh, Bad Batch. And definitely if she's, uh, if she's Relic, she's definitely going to be faster and she's going to end up outspeeding your echo no matter what just because of all the extra speed bonuses and turn meter generation she gets if shore is in there um, if shore is not in there then you just have to add 65 to iron versus your speed and if your echo is faster than that then uh, uh, maybe you can use a uh, bad batch but even then you know like you saw over here it, it can get a little risky and uh, and problematic um, so yeah so that was the bad batch counter to iron versio now only one final team left i still have my troopers 
Um, so, you know, this is an overkill. I just decide to go ahead and uh, take care of uh, business over here. This is sort of overkill for troopers, but, you know, these are the best team that I have remaining behind. And I need to do what I can to get uh, full banners or close to full. I don't think I'll be able to recover all of the uh, protection on Dark Trooper. But uh, this should give me at least 64 banners, I believe. All right. <clears throat> so we were able to get through the character zone pretty comfortably. It was all a one shot except for that uh, one deliberate lost battle on Aura, uh, on uh, JMK with Aura to snipe Cat. Um, so at the end of my character zone, I was at 1344, which is not great. It's not great efficiency at all. Um, even if you don't count the 20 banners from the drop battle, it's uh, I've dropped tons of banners elsewhere. And as expected, my enemy has kept, uh, uh, my opponent has kept JM, uh, uh, the General Kenobi, R9 General Kenobi and R9 Piet. So really good ships. And uh, he's kept, uh, he knows that I don't have good rebels. So he's kept uh, the um, starting lineup as uh, um, as IG. And the IG starting lineup is, is pretty simple if you've got decent rebels, especially if your Biston outspeeds the IG. But my Biston is, is pretty bad. So I uh, I didn't know what I was going to do against this uh, this particular squad. But I decided to wait to see if my opponent uh, has, uh, you know, what my opponent has done in terms of clearing me. And when they cleared that character zone, they were only six banners ahead of me, which was pretty close. They did drop a battle up front in uh, uh, against the JTR squad. Um, so... Um, let me see. I think my opponent sent me a message on what teams they used for uh, for each of these. Let me see if I can find that message and uh, tell you guys exactly what was used against what. So, um, yeah. So my opponent used uh, on the um, on the JTR. They used Treya and they lost against that. So it is good to see. Uh, you know, my JTR was able to hold out against uh, uh, R5 Treya. Um, and then he cleaned it up with Geos. Um, he used, uh, on the SLKR, he used uh, an off-meta counter, JKR, JKL, uh, which was great. Um, and then against, uh, on the Treya squad, they used a uh, Maul and Troopers. Uh, no, he used uh, Troopers against the Treya squad. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he used, uh, on the Maul DR squad, he used GG Newt, as I was expecting, because I wanted to make sure I pulled the GG Newt away from uh, CLS at the back. And then at the back, he one-shot everything. There was uh, no problem at all over here. He used, uh, let's see, he used uh, Sith Eternal versus the Ray Cat uh, and ended up with poor banners, I think 57 or something like that, or 52. I think he ended up with 52 banners over there. So that did its job. It managed to, to uh, you know, um, pull some banners out. And then uh, CLS was a mirror match. He used uh, Zam Bounty Hunters versus Django. He's got Zam Omicron as well. Um, so he was able to outspeed my uh, my Zam, uh, my own Django, and uh, able to beat that. And then, uh, let's see, up top over here against, uh, uh, what else did they do? Mm. Yeah, Maul, um, used Maul versus the Scion of Django team. Uh, that bought Boba team, used Maul versus that. I think... Uh, uh, since he didn't keep Maul with his Lord Vader, that was that's probably must have been an easy battle for 65. He used uh, Gas versus Iron Verzio, so that was an overkill. But it's good to see that my Iron Verzio was was uh, able to pull a Gas squad. Um, used EP Mara Starkiller versus Maul Mothma, so that was an overkill. But you know he had his EP Mara Starkiller in there, which is which could have taken out a GL on its own as well. So even if I'd kept another GL on defense. He would have probably one-shot me pretty comfortably as well, just because he had Star Killer on uh, on offense, and then uh, he used. Uh, um, yep, I think that's about it. Yep, that's it. So, and then he used a JML versus the uh, the Lord Vader as well. Um, that was, uh, uh, yeah, JML is a pretty hard counter to Lord Vader. Even this particular version with with the uh, Vader and Maul and and Thrawn in there, 
um, JML is, is usually no problem at all. So here we are at the end of the character zones. He's six battles ahead and I am terrible. Uh, you know, my ships are way worse than his. Um, and he's got so much better ships, uh, both on offense as well as on defense. So I was sure at this point that it's a lost cause. So anyway, I waited to see what the final outcome was because my opponent was attacking ships. Um, and uh, final outcome was uh, my opponent went ahead and one shot my ships for 1662. And unfortunately, I, I wasn't able to one shot either of them. I had really bad RNG on um, on the executor, um, you know, um, I took in my own malevolence because I was forced to because I needed to one shot it um, and uh, things were going great. But, you know, um, the taunt ended up landing on Razor Crest and he ended up dodging every single thing, even the buzz droids that I started putting in there and, uh, you know, um, ended up losing without uh, killing a single ship. I cleaned it up with uh, with Radis and um, and first order after that. And then on the uh, the negotiator comp, my uh, the, the tie bomber comp is is usually tricky, um, you know, uh, my Anakin died before uh, I could even get to move or get in plow for the healing. Um, so I had to clean it up with Rebels. So, you know, at least I was able to clear it. But, you know, against a, a fleet like this, I, I basically had no chance. Both R9 um, and uh, and really good ships over there as well. So managed to clear it, but ended up losing by about 50 banners or so. Uh, 47 banners, I believe. But uh, 45 banners. But but that's that's fine. You know, I, um, uh, even though this was a loss, it's disappointing. But I felt that I played okay against a, a roster like this. I think um, I felt okay with my performance. So this is a good loss. This is something that I don't mind losing. Especially, you know, I mind losing when I I don't perform up to my fullest expectation. When I make mistakes. When I uh, you know do things which can be avoided. But I feel that I played the best that I could in this particular match. And I'm I'm pretty happy i'm pretty pumped about this performance I, I was able to use a few new counters that i've never used before and uh, got to learn a few new things um, got to learn a few things from my opponent as well uh, you know now i'll be using c more to counter uh, jedi master kenobis as well uh, you know I've, I've been practicing that in the in the arena now so i've got uh, i've got a few uh, new things new tricks under my belt and a few more options to give me flexibility in my in my offense so pretty happy about that so Overall, yep, that's the end of the first match. Um, um, this this loss was inevitable. I mean, I I, I got three and zero last time. This week, uh, this one I'll probably lose another one match as well because my next opponent he's from Maw, um, and uh, <laughs> probably even better uh, uh, modded and better roster than than my current opponent Zoo. So that probably is probably going to end up being a loss as well. Um, so after the three and zero, I'll probably end up with a one and two um, if I'm lucky. And then uh, in the last week, let's see who I get. Um, and hopefully we can finish it off with a two and one. And then I will end with a seven and five, I believe, which I'm fine with. I think seven and five, anything above six and six and above is uh, is perfectly fine. All right. So that's it for uh, for today's video. I might be busy in the next couple of days um, uh, with a few other things. So I might not upload a video for the next few days, but I will... Uh, I will uh, let you know the next. I will upload a video next time when I'm uh, when I've got a really good matchup or you know when when I've got something cool to share. I will definitely upload the next video. Until then, hope you found this useful. Uh, hope you found these the spreadsheet that I've uh, uh, you know linked down below useful as well. Uh, until next time, I will uh, I will catch you later. Take care and happy gaming.